Hey mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I've got me a large uh, purple spored puffball mushroom that I want to share with you. The scientific name for this is Calvatia cyanthiformis. And it is a fairly common species. It is a decomposer, so you'll find it growing in leaf litter. You'll find it in a lot of yards and fields. And uh, it can get, as you can see, quite large. Uh, you know, it's almost the size of, well, not my head, but like half the size of my head or three quarters of the size of my face. And so, uh, you know, they can get to be a quite respectable size, especially if you're interested in um, eating them. So depending on your point of view, puffballs are either really delicious all the way down to like, well, eh, they're kind of neutral and taste like whatever you cook them with. I'm somewhere in the middle because puffballs, when they are in really nice condition, have a very uh, fine sort of texture that is white and a little bit uh, pillowy in the way that tofu is. So anyway, I want to teach you how to identify this specific species, again, a purple spored puffball. So uh, first of all, and most notably, uh, it has purple spores when it is fully mature. So there is a very similar species that is called the brain puffball. Uh, I think that's the common name, but it's Calvatia craniformis. So it looks very brain-like and very, very similar to this in many respects, except that it doesn't have purple spores. That it's kind of like a brownish, uh, olivey color. So the first thing that you'll notice about this mushroom, even if you don't find it when it's mature and sort of sporulating, you can see as I handle it, a little bit of this sort of brownish purple uh, starts to come through. And also, this is a very common feature with Calvatia cyanthiformis. It's basically as the mushroom matures and as the spores go from a nice firm white edible uh, texture to sort of a uh, an amalgamation of, of powdery purple uh, uh, floof that will go and sporulate and uh, make more of these. As it matures, sort of this outer surface will oftentimes get these little pock marks or sort of almost a mosaic of these little dots. And you can see they are brown, but they have a bit of this, uh, you know, sort of earthy purple tone to it. Sometimes these have less of a neck. And also, as I mentioned, the uh, the brain or the, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it the brain puffball, uh, it oftentimes gets mistaken for this species because it really oftentimes has a big neck and uh, a little bit of this sort of contours uh, that make it look a little bit like a cranium. All right, uh, and both of them are edible. I find uh, the purple spored puffball to be superior. And I, um, I think maybe a part of that is this outer uh, sort of layer that protects the mushroom inside and keeps it more consistent on the inside. I am struggling with uh, my equipment here. So I have wanted to do this for a really long time on my channel. I spend a lot of time on public land making these videos, but every now and again, I'll do one in my backyard and that's where I am right now. One of the advantages of this is I get to use this ridiculous Tonto that I got upsold on Amazon. I wouldn't take this to a public forest and harvest mushrooms with it, uh, first of all. I'm pretty sure this is super illegal and definitely doesn't give off the vibe that I want to share. However, I do want to use it. So I'm gonna back up for a second. First of all, what I'm gonna do with this ridiculous, uh, uh, this absurd small sword is I'm going to cut the mushroom in half and see if it is in uh, good condition to eat. But I uh, just wanted to sort of sidebar here. If you ever find yourself on Amazon and you're looking for uh, a knife to purchase, first of all, always, always, always look at the size of the knife. So I found myself in the very common situation where I had to uh, re-up on my pocket knife supply because I lose them like crazy. And I got myself a pretty fancy like tactical knife. It wasn't very expensive. And so I go to check out and I, I didn't look at the length of it. So I'm like, it's, it's gotta be about right. And like the dimensions looked right. It was not a very good decision. So I go to check out and it's like, okay, you, you're gonna be paying us $15 for this ridiculous knife. However, for another $19.99, we will throw in a Tonto. Now, 
I am not usually very impulsive when it comes to purchases, but I will say this is an exception. I haven't been able to use it, but every now and again, it's just kind of nice to know that I have one. It's terrible quality. Like there, besides being illegal and menacing, I wouldn't use it for mushroom harvesting under normal circumstances because the, uh, the real deal and what really works is a pocket knife and a brush. However, uh, when you're trying to discern whether or not one of your puff balls is edible, the best thing to do, oh, it does have, it has a nice enough edge to open this up. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna saw away here. And uh, as you can see, sort of the outer layer is a little bit of a, a skin as it were. And so if we open it up, you'll see that it's starting to get a little bit yellowy on the inside, only a little bit. So you can see, these spots right here are the beginning of this, uh, it's called a gleba. So like this interior is, as I mentioned, nice and soft and pillowy. When it is fully white, that's when it's edible. As the mushroom matures, it'll start to discolor. And uh, then as it gets fully mature, this will just become a dark brown, or excuse me, purple black powder. And then the whole thing will explode. And uh, you know, this, will, this uh, mosaic thing will probably rupture. It'll be very dramatic and it'll leave like a little hunk of purple black uh, um, scurf on the ground. And so like, if you ever see a pile of uh, just sort of powdery uh, substance that is of that color, oftentimes it is the remains of this mushroom. So I would call this in good enough condition to eat. Um, you know, sometimes when it gets a lot more yellow, it starts to take on like a little bit of a, a funky flavor, but not necessarily a bad one. I typically stick with puff balls that are, however, like nice and white and firm on the inside. Uh, and so the best thing to do as far as that is sort of like evaluate it in terms of how you would evaluate a super firm tofu that has also been squeezed out and is a little bit more uh, spongy. So uh, these mushrooms also, they keep relatively well. So like if you refrigerate them, this flesh isn't as sort of temperamental, uh, both to cooking and to uh, preservation as some of the mushrooms that like you get them home, you should eat them the same day. You should eat all wild mushrooms fairly promptly after you get them home. But this one, uh, as long as you get it in this condition, it's not going to turn to purple um, powder on you if you uh, bring it home with you. So once you pluck it, it's kind of done uh, turning into, you know, disintegrating into um, the uh, purple spore uh, deposit that it will eventually become. That is contingent upon, you know, you caring for it and cutting it up and putting it in your fridge, etc. and so on. All right, so uh, final notes on this, I think, uh, really to recognize this mushroom. And one of the things I really enjoy about it is it has these sort of small uh, and, you know, subtle contours. And so I just really like how it is finely, uh, like lumpy. And then this, uh, again, sort of mosaic style or a little bit broken up, little scaly. I mean, they're not scaly because they're not really separate, but they look scaly uh, as the mushroom grows and it starts to sort of stretch this uh, light brown outer skin that it has. So uh, that's all I've got to say. I hope you find a billion mushrooms. It's been raining like bananas in uh, North Carolina. So I am excited to find what's out there and I hope you find a whole bunch of stuff for yourself.